what's this moment about that uh, attracts people to your uh, your facts and your research? That's a good question, and I think there are several factors. One of them is the basic premise by which I conduct my research. I come from a different angle than anybody in publishing today, and that is that is chronology. It is the most ignored of all the sciences. So this is one approach, but another approach that that I've brought to the table is that it's more like the Socratic method. It's admitting what is not true so we can see what's left behind. Modern books on history are publishing data using chronological materials that are absolutely falsified. They're untrue. That's the elimination process, right? You, you remove everything that's false. So let's separate fact from fiction. Let's do it. And let's blow up a few paradigms. Uh, one of the talents that you have, and I, I I wasn't aware of as of how big this talent actually is until I read this bullet point list is to compress this complex knowledge into short, precise bullet points. So what I want to do with you, Jason, is read each bullet point okay. and get your reactions on it. Okay. I want to start the way you published this on your uh, Facebook community and your YouTube community page where I found it was what archaics, that's your channel, demonstrates the reset protocol and AIX. Okay. Here's a bullet point summary of the published books, hundreds of charts, and 600 archaics videos. And here's statement number one. Eight, humans are experiencing life sims in a construct. Okay, so let's say we're completely new to this. What does that mean? Life sims. What does life sims mean? That one statement. You're right. You're right. I do have a gift for the art of abbreviation to make concise, absolutely complex subjects, but and to make them comprehensible. This one statement, uh, humans are experiencing life sims in a construct. This is a conclusion based off decades of research. I believe that the oversoul is the constructor, the architect of all these constructs. I do not believe we live in the only one. I believe that many obscure fragments from ancient religious texts were admitting to this fact of this unreal reality. It is only unreal from our perspective from the observer's perspective, us right here. But there is a real reality somewhere. This is why I call this the simulacrum. It is a copy, which means it's false. It is a copy of something that is real elsewhere. So uh, and what I mean- So that's what the Gnostics basically taught us, yeah, right? Well, yeah, 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 it's very Gnostic. Other, well, it's yeah. very Gnostic. So uh, this is a construct. And it, it is ruled by an adversarial presence I call AIX, but we'll get to that in another bullet point. But the reason I have adopted the life sims is for a couple reasons. One of them is in the past 30 years, scientists have isolated many case studies that I can't ignore. I do not compartmentalize. This is what science does. Science compartmentalizes all its discoveries, so scientists in one genre are never really fully privy to what is being discovered in, in another in another field. And because nobody's really employing cross-disciplinary approaches, these discoveries remain hidden to the scientists in other fields. Now, this is what I do, cross-disciplinary. I want to see the evidence from, from every dis scientific discipline so I can make up an educated guess. And one thing that I have found, I cannot refute, is that scientists have found many children who have recorded living as someone else prior to their entrance into this life. And yet their perspectives are very adult. They're very unique, meaning they are remembering things from the perspective of a 70, 80 or 90 year old, as opposed to a four, five, six, seven and eight year old child who is limited in, in their ability to convey what they remember because they don't have the appropriate vocabulary. And yet these scientists have documented that, that what is being conveyed is actually more sophisticated than the individual conveying it. Do you follow me? I Absolutely. I cannot ignore this. I can't ignore that too many children, thousands of them, remember that they were just somebody a few years ago dying of old age in a house two blocks away. Or they were actually a family member who passed away a year ago. And now they're back in the construct of somebody else. Now, one of the fundamental tenets of the archaics research, and I say this all the time, if I can show something to be true somewhere, then it must be true everywhere. There's not just one or 10,000 kids being reincarnated. 
This is the condition with the race, all of us. If reincarnation can be scientifically shown in a few, then it applies to all. We are all living these life stems, whether we remember them or not. And to me, this makes absolute sense of many of the obscure statements in the Bible concerning the creator and concerning God. I'm not talking about the Demiurge, those talking about Yahweh and talking about Satan and the adversary and, and Baal and Ashtoreth Karnam. I'm talking about there are obscure statements in, in the Old and New Testament that are referring to the actual oversoul and not to artificial gods within the construct. What I see is that the eternal is not a singularity but is eternal, meaning it never stopped. Therefore, the creation is not an event. The creation is an ongoing process. And if more and more constructs are being created, then it's going to require more and more souls to mature through these constructs in order to, to help the Godhead in the administrative duties of the cosmos, because this is what the ancient texts teach us. This is what the Christian mysteries teach us, that we're moving forward to become one with the Godhead. And this oneness means that we have to live through multiple perspectives. We have to, we can't just be the prodigal son. The, the parable of the prodigal son epitomizes the message I'm trying to convey to you right now. Let me explain. The prodigal son was the one that took his father's money, left home, went whoring, paid for prostitutes, got drunk, did drugs, did everything he wasn't supposed to do, realized the father was right from the beginning, humbled himself, returned back to home and told his dad everything he did. But the son who never rebelled was the other son in the story he's mentioned too. He never left home, but his father never threw a banquet for him. His father never appreciated that he had stayed. The appreciation was given on the one who actually went and experienced everything so it could have a, a subjective experience as opposed to the other son who blindly obeyed. You deserve the truth, but Big Tech does not want you to hear it. So we built our own inspired platform on the inspiredchannel.com. Just click the link in the video description or the pinned comment.